Hi everyone, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your February 16th to the 29th, 2024 astrology reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and it gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much for doing so. So let's see what the cards have to say. Angels ooh, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So as this is an astrology reading, we are using astrology cards. Spirit wants one more pulled. Okay. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So we have here Scorpio energy reversed. We have Venus. We have the squared energy coming forward. We have Libra reversed. We have Saturn and we have the seventh house. So let's see. And I know that might not mean anything at all to anyone. And for others of you, you're going to be like, oh, get this. Absolutely. We're going to go into everything in just a little bit. So let's see what spirit wants us to know during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Here we have blessed. So during this time, spirit is saying, if you remember nothing else, remember that you are blessed. And that is an absolutely beautiful thing to know, because sometimes we don't feel blessed, and sometimes life gets hard and heavy and intense, and the blessings seem to be few and far between between but spirits like listen you are created you are loved and you are blessed know that always our chakra energy angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides this is flexibility reversed so this is a sacral chakra this is where a lot of our creative energy is held and also a lot of our sensual energy so just be be mindful about this during this time that we can be very it has to be one way right we're not going to be very flexible with things and spirits like no be a little bit more open a little bit more flexible for yourself for your soul for the way that you want things to move forward for your expectations for yourself and it's really letting our creative energy move forward, opening up to wisdom, opening up to insights. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. Here we have the eight of swords. We can have a tendency as a collective, because this is a collective astrology reading, to be a little bit too much in our own heads. And we have to be mindful about that. We can overthink, we can overanalyze, we can question. Spirit is saying, like, listen to your intuition, listen to yourself. Don't, don't live in the doubts of your own head, in the second guessing, because we can live there forever and ever and ever and never really get to where it is that we want to be. And it will stop us from getting anywhere we want to be. There are people who are less talented than you, who have, you know, less education preparation, who are like, of course I can do it. And they then they go out and do it. And you're like, wait a minute, you know, you're supposed to have all of this behind you because we're too much in our own heads. It's not saying go off half cock, which is a very, very interesting statement. And I'm going to to tell you that it was when you in in like the the Revolutionary War, the Civil War in the United States, because that's where I am in. Um, it was called half cock because you wouldn't pull back the trigger of the gun all the way. And then the gun would blow up in your face. And that, that was a very, very bad thing. So here it's like, don't go off, you know, n without the proper information, but don't be so much in your own head, doubting yourself so much that you never take the steps forward that you need. So just be mindful about this during this time. Okay. So let's talk <clears throat> about the cards and then we'll talk about this time. Actually, let's talk about this time astrologically speaking. So should we do it in tandem with the cards? Yeah. So we're crowned with Scorpio energy right here. And this says intensity, exposing, purging, and renewing. And this is reverse. So there's something we're holding onto where we don't need it anymore. And we're going to see through the astrology of this time, okay, how is that? How is that? You know, how do we dive deeper into that? But there's something here that needs to be let go of. And with the Scorpio energy reverse, and it can be Scorpio in our chart, where whatever 
whatever energy that holds can be holding us back in one way or another. We can be a doubt or fear within ourselves. So just being mindful about this. If we are Scorpios, we can have a tendency to get in our own way. So just be mindful about this during this time. Venus energy is give and receive love, find value and see beauty. So it is letting our world be beautiful. It is seeing ourselves as beautiful. It is calling forward something that is exquisite. And what I love here is the, the pearl in the shell, you know, and, and that is connected with Venus, right? And the sea. And it was even said that Venus Aphrodite was formed out of sea, sea foam, which I think is beautiful. But it's also like, if you look at the sea and you look at sea foam, it's kind of scuzzy. It's not always that, that beautiful thing that we think that we like to romanticize it as. And a pearl, well, that is an irritation that got into, you know, an oyster's oyster's mouth and it covered it with mucus and mucus and mucus until it created a pearl. What we see as beautiful, the the oyster itself sees as an irritant. So, and it's just oyster mucus. So it's it's all in the eye of the beholder. Let yourself see the beauty in things. And if other people don't get it, that's okay. Again, as long as we're coming from a place of love, of compassion and of, you know, beauty of soul, that's all that matters. It moves us then to square. So square here says a challenging situation and a mountain to climb. So we're going to see that this time frame for us from the 16th to the 29th does have challenging situations and mountains to climb. And it can be talking about something like I was just watching about cleaning up waste on Mount Everest, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. So it might also be like, hey, climbing the mountains, it, it, that isn't the only hurdle that is there. We can think the task at hand, that's the hurdle. But then everything that goes along with it is also the hurdle that we have to be aware of. So just knowing that with the squared where it's like, okay, it's a challenging situation, but that, that might not only be, that might not be the only challenge that we face during that time. It brings us to Libra reversed. And this is consideration, fairness, and harmony. And we might not be really concerned with the fairness of things or considering things or, you know, the harmony of things. We can be really concerned about the output, the product, the, the way things are moving forward. So just be mindful about this. If we have Libra in our chart, we can find we're stumbling over it. If we are Libras ourselves, we can find that we're stumbling over our own energy, doubting ourselves, questioning ourselves, just like with being Scorpios, we, not, we might not be showing up for ourselves in the way that we want to. And it's very interesting that Libra energy moves in, Libra timeframe moves into Scorpio timeframe. Then we have Saturn. And this says, feel restricted, experience struggle, learn hard work, learn hard work and patience. So it is saying, put your nose to the grindstone. Now, Saturn also rules Capricorn. So if you have Capricorn energy or you're a Capricorn, you can see that your Saturn side is really coming out. It's like hard work, it's struggles, it's determination, it's letting nothing stop you. It's knowing that things are going to be tough, but it's almost very much that that sentiment of never explain, never complain type of thing. And sometimes you do need to explain and sometimes it feels really good to complain. So just, just be aware of that. We don't have to be so stoic all the time. It's not complaining to strangers, but it can be having those, those people to talk to to just unload on and, and just be like, I need this release. And so you're going to see during this time here that there's a need for a release. There's a need for a, a looking at the, the different avenues of things, looking at the different sides of things, understanding ourselves more and being more compassionate and being more loving with us. It moves us then to the seventh house. And this says profound relationships, intimacy, and romantic partnerships. Now, it's very interesting when we have the sacral chakra reverse, where it's our intimacy, it's our connection, right? And and here with the seventh house, com house coming forward, profound relationships, intimacy, romantic partnerships, they're going to be very important to us. And we're going to see that we put a level of importance on, on love, during this time, it doesn't simply have to be romantic love, but again, profound relationships are going to be those relationships that are nearest and dearest to our heart. We have our Venus energy showing up really loud and proud for us during this time. The Venus in our chart is going to come through 
with more of a more of a say during this time more of a sense of like okay you need to see the beauty you need to see the love it needs to be connected you're going to find yourself very drawn to the beautiful very drawn to the i was going to say, spirit is saying the sublime but some of us are also going to find ourselves drawn to the sublime and the surreal so just be mindful just be be aware of that it's like just a little bit like avant-garde a little bit pushing the boundaries that's also going to be very attractive to us as well so just just knowing here that relationships really matter and things might not always be in harmony we're going to be looking at we can be a little bit of workaholics we're going to be looking at looking at the struggle the determination the focus the insight the the sense of like i've, I've got to get this done and then we can find that challenging situations arise and it's not only completing that challenge but it's like okay then it's everything that challenge entails or has taken so just be aware of this and we're going to have a tendency during this time to to not release what we need to release we're just going to hold on to things we're just going to be like no no no, no. i got all of this and spirit's like no show yourself compassion and grace and that's going to be really important so let's talk about this time astrologically speaking and we're going to have here we're going to have the moon and we're going to have the astrology of it all so on the 16th of february we have venus entering into aquarius so very strong venus energy coming forward here and this energy is challenging us in relationships it's telling us to spend more time with family with friends it's really being open to to new experiences but also opening our social circles we are needing to be independent and we are also going to be really drawn to the to the unconventional very much that kind of like avant-garde energy coming forward now on the 16th we also have mercury in aquarius squared uranus in taurus now this can be a time where it's difficult to really hone in our minds and get everything focused we can lash out rather easily so do be aware about that we need to try and avoid fights and we need to be mindful to take breaks to slow things down to really say okay you know how do i need to show up for me now the first quarter moon is going to be in Taurus. Now this is going to this is going to take some adjustments. We're going to be like, okay, how do I adjust things? How do I move things forward and, and get everything aligned the way that we want them to be? Now, slow and steady is really going to win the race with the first quarter moon in Taurus. And we're going to see that this slow, steady approach really really has its place in our lives over the next week. So knowing that and knowing okay slow it down look at things look at the different angles is going to be really important we are confident we are you know being more confident in our decision making and we're also going to see see things through once we start to act on them it's like okay i have to i have to do this and i have to see it through what's interesting is that the moon moves into to gemini during during the 16th as well and the energy is a bit all over the place so we go from this really steady Taurus energy and we have this Taurus energy that has been yeah that has been growing within us and we're going to see that there's this energy that then kind of moves to a little bit more chaotic we need to try and stay focused we need to harness that energy of Taurus and really keep our mind our mind on the on the goal of what we want and not just jumping from one thing to the other to the other so being aware of that is a super important thing now venus is in aquarius conjunct pluto in aquarius our passion is strong and it's going to be important to know that our passion is strong we have very intense relationships that's why we're kind of booked end here by love and relationships coming through this is a great time for relationships and this is a great time to channel our creativity and really also embrace our flexibility like we're going to be much more open to being flexible and getting out of our own heads getting out of our own way which is going to be important we're also going to be more inclined to see ourselves as blessed now we have the waxing gibbous moon in Gemini on this day. On the 18th of February, the sun enters into, into Pisces. Now, this is the 18th, the 19th of February, the sun enters into Pisces. So this is imaginative, creative, compassionate, you know, intuitive. Our, our intuitive inclination is going to be so strong. And we're going to see that as we come into Pisces season, our imagination, our compassion, our intuition, they become strong building back blocks for which we move off of or build from during this time. 
is a time to connect with our subconscious, to strengthen our intuition, and to release what is holding us back. And we're going to see this and really embrace it. Now, the moon enters into Cancer, which is also telling us, hey, listen, take time, like take care, slow it down, and the matters of the home matter the most. So finding that balance, finding that harmony between our, our work obligations and our home life obligations is going to be really important. And it is making making our living space, making our our mental space, our home, you know, wherever it is that we spend a lot of time comfortable and cozy, that's going to be a great thing for us. Now, the waxing gibbous moon is in Gemini and in Cancer during this time. On the 19th, we have the moon in Cancer, sextile Jupiter in Taurus. Also, you know, the, the sun entering into Pisces, depending on on who you talk to that either happens on the 18th or it happens on the 19th so expect that energy change to also be very prevalent on the 19th of february so the moon in cancer sex is no yeah moon in cancer is sextile jupiter in taurus there we go that's how you say that and this is the fact that this brings forward the fact that our opinions are wide open like we are so open-minded during this time we're looking at things and we're like oh, it could be like this or it could be like that. So this is great for exploring. It's great for diving into things. We need to keep our mind open. And we're going to find that open-mindedness is really going to serve us well because we're going to see that we kind of like magpie certain things. We pick certain things up and it's like, oh, this and this and this, and I can mix it together. And oh my gosh, that would be exquisite or that's so out of the realm of what I was imagining. And that's going to be very, very, very good for us. The waxing gibbous moon is in Cancer. Now on the 20th, the moon in Cancer is sextile Uranus in Taurus. We are going to try and do things differently, and it's going to be really important on this day, on the 20th, to try and do things differently. We're not going to do things as we originally thought, or we're going to see things kind of breaking our original expectations. And that's going to be okay. This leads to new insight. This leads to new ideas. The 19th really opens our mind to the fact that the 20th is going to bring ideas and, and ways forward that we hadn't envisioned or we hadn't seen or we didn't think. And it's going to start to pull us out of our head, right? Out of the Eight of Swords energy where Spirit's saying, hey, be mindful. We can have a tendency to be stuck here. We can have a tendency to be overwhelmed here. On the 21st, the moon is in Leo, opposite Mars in Aquarius. Now, this can be a frustrating time. So just knowing that a fr frustrations old frustrations, new frustrations, things could just be frustrating us a bit more. And it can have a tendency to boil over. We need to keep busy during this time, especially if we have the ability to keep busy physically, that's going to be super beneficial for us. So just knowing that and knowing that this is going to be a time where we can get annoyed, we can not let things go, and we can we, we can find that what what is thrown around is not necessarily things that are annoying us today but things that have been building up for us for for quite some 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 time so that's on the 21st we also have the moon entering into leo which is really a time for play which doesn't really fit the fact that we are frustrated but we do want more it's it, you're going to find yourself saying i want more time for me right i want more time for myself like when is it going to be my time. So just be mindful about that. We need to take take breaks and we need to incorporate fun into our life. That's going to be a very important thing. We have the waxing gibbous moon in Leo also on the 21st. On the 22nd, we have Venus in Aquarius conjunct Mars in Aquarius. The energy is passionate. We can be quite romantic. Again, romance is going to be huge for us in the last half of February. So is creativity. We're going to be much more creative and wanting to walk down and really embrace creative projects. Now with Saturn energy being so strong during this time, we need to be mindful that we might not be as creative as we want to be or really constrict our creativity with a lot of rules. So being mindful of this, taking this in, understanding this is going to be super important as well. On the 23rd, we have Mercury entering into Pisces. Now, what we're going to see is that there's 
an increase of imagination and an increase of needing to express that imagination, especially verbally. Like we can be really drawn to storytelling or listening to to books on tape, you know, type of thing. You know, audible can be some come something we we subscribe to where there's just a sense of creative storytelling is going to be so important to us. We can be very drawn to movies as well. We have a lot of creative ideas for new projects moving us forward. We are going to have a tendency to see the challenges in things. And Spirit's just like, hey, just jot down your ideas in a booklet, you know, put them in a notepad on your phone and, and let them grow. Like, let them grow in your imagination. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it can be that we wait till the end of this month when we get out of this sense of tackling challenges or having it to follow these certain rules or those certain rules where we start to free ourselves. But letting it grow in the love of imagination is going to be a great thing for us. We we get really bored by the mundane. We want to break away from it with Mercury entering into Pisces and we need to get lost in fantasy. It's just going to be so important for us. The moon also enters into Virgo on the 23rd where we're going to find that even though we want to get lost in fantasy, right? That kind of like making a list, checking it twice energy comes through and we're going to sit there and say, okay, these are the tasks that I need to get done. This is what needs to be, you know, this is how it needs to be. It's going to be great for work. We can find it stifling creatively. So just be mindful about that. But also it can be that it really helps us prepare for new projects that we have coming, new ideas that we have moving us forward. So that's going to be really great. It's going to help us to stay focused. We have the waxing gibbous moon in Virgo. On the 24th, we have Venus in Aquarius squared Jupiter in Taurus. Now, we're going to find on this day that indulging in, indulging is going to feel good. And our Venus energy is going to come through very powerfully and be like, listen, just go with what feels good. Go with what makes you happy. And we can take this too far. We can. We can take this too far. And it can be more detrimental to us than it can be helpful and enjoyable. So just be mindful about this. We need everything in moderation. And if we want to be a little bit lazy on this day, let yourself, but let yourself be also responsible. That's going to be very, very, very important. We also have on the 24th, the full moon in Virgo, which there will be a separate video on, but this is a time to get things done. So just know that with the full moon in Virgo. On the 25th, we have the moon in Virgo, trine Uranus in Taurus. We are severely independent on the 25th, and this helps us get things done. We just need to stay independent. It's like, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to figure it out type of thing. This is actually a great day that if you work in a group, just tell everybody, hey, listen, let's take this day and let's take this time to brainstorm, not together, not all together. Let's do it individually and see what see what comes up. And instead of saying to everybody, okay, read your ideas, you know, just have people hand in their papers or hand in, like type it up so nobody can tell who wrote what and and let one person read them and see what ideas work, what ideas don't work, you know, how, how things move forward. But that sense of amenity, also independence to be able to create and cultivate our minds and, you know, move ourselves forward. That's going to really be something that's great on the 25th of February. We also have the waxing gibbous moon in Virgo. On the 26th, we have the moon in Libra, trine Pluto in Aquarius. Now this is us channeling our passions and and power into something really helpful. It's like, okay, you know, this is what I want this is where I need to be. I see how to put the pieces of the puzzle together. I've got this. And we can feel very empowered, very emboldened. We also have the waxing gibbous moon in Libra. On the 27th, we have Mars in Aquarius, squared Jupiter in Taurus. Everything seems to be going well. And we can be tempted to push things too far. We can be tempted to be like, oh, everything's going great. Now I just have to rock the the apple cart and see what happens. So just be just be mindful about this. It's going to be really important for us to act smart during during the 27th, not be like, oh, well, everything's going great. I wonder what happens when I kick a bee's nest type of thing. It's like, don't do it. Look at what you need. Look at what you want. Look at what the energy is telling you within yourself, not just kind of like, I'm bored. Let's see what happens type of thing. On the 28th, we have the sun in Pisces conjunct Mercury in Pisces. Ideas flow. Communication is easy. It's like, we've got this. So 
we are going to see also the results of something that started about two months ago, starting to really come to head. And we feel like we can we can move forward in new pa- in new plans. We can like build new things. We can have things move forward in ways that we hadn't imagined that they could. We also have on the 28th, Mercury in Pisces conjunct Saturn in Pisces. Now our mental energy is disciplined on this day and we can really focus on new goals and long-term plans. We have a very practical, you know, Saturn energy is coming through very, very intensely. It's like we have a very practical down to earth approach and we can really be detailed and attentive to how to get things done and how to move forward towards what we want. Now, the sun is in Pisces conjunct Saturn in Pisces, uh, also on the 28th. And again, our, our activity is disciplined. You know, it is smart. It is working towards our goals. We are working towards our goals, but the energy itself within us, it's like, these are your goals. This is what you're working towards. This is what you want. Don't forget it. Don't like, don't blow it. And it, we're going to have that energy come forward where it's like, this is where I need to be. What's holding me back? Like, why am I holding me back? What am I doubting myself about? It is time to make progress. It is time for us to let our, our ambition just shine. So that's going to be a really good thing. Coming to everything with love is going to be super important. Also, just that super stable realization that everything isn't going to be as as easy as we thought it was. And I know that people are going to say, Dean, I don't need that reminder. I already know it. But sometimes we think the construction of something, the idea of something is the hardest thing, but then implementing it or putting it in, you know, and making it part of our daily practice, that can be the hardest thing. So Spirit is saying here, you know, it's not just just climbing the mountain that is important that we, that we take that into account. It's everything that is entailed to climbing that mountain and that has to be brought back with us so just be just be aware of this during this time the moon also enters into scorpio which we can find that research you know investigation is really something we're into during this time so on the 28th we can do really great research we can dive deeper and deeper and deeper into things and we can really find out everything that we need to know so if your job involves research or if you like to research things as a hobby, you know, on the 28th or dive deeper into things as a hobby, the 28th is a really great time to just dive deep and really see yourself making progress. We also have the waxing gibbous moon in Libra and then also in Scorpio. On the 29th, we have Mercury in Pisces, sextile Jupiter in Taurus. Our ideas are are big. We see the big picture clearly. And we're really saying, okay, why not? Like, why not step forward? Expressing ourselves is easy. And we're very, we're very motivated, but we're also very like outgoing on this day. So it's like, yes, I can do this. I know how to do this. I know I can connect this. I know I can move this forward. And there isn't that doubt. There isn't that fear. Well, there might be doubt and fear, but it's not the overwhelming emotion that's holding us back. We also have the waning gibbous moon in Scorpio. This is going to be a time where we are ambitious, where our hearts really do have a very powerful say in ourselves, how we want to move forward, where it is that we want to be, what it is that we're looking for. And we can feel just also out of balance the whole entire time. And I know that there's so much good energy coming forward that it's like, okay, Dane, why say that we can feel out of balance? Because we can because this is going to be a time where we can be focused, we can be embracing what we love, but we can always, in in the back of our minds, be second guessing ourselves, always looking at things and saying, mm, it doesn't feel quite right. It isn't perfect. Let go of perfect. Close enough is good enough, you know? And that type of energy, I mean, unless we're doing something where it has to be, you know, just laser focused precision all the time, but a lot of times close enough can be good enough. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent. It can be It can be less and that's okay. That's okay because we're going to paralyze ourselves and we're going to have a tendency to just absolutely like, you know, freeze, just absolutely freeze if we say it has to be perfect because we'll never get there. And we're going to be so hypercritical of ourselves during this time that the freezing will be, will be super easy. We can see every thumbprint, every mistake, everything we could have, should have, would have, instead of saying, wow, that's, that's pretty darn good that is pretty darn good. It's not perfect, but it's out there. And it's better for things to get out there into the world than for things to be perfect and never be seen. So just know that. Just know that during this time. Our subconscious spirit message here is meditate 
it's going to be really important for us to meditate, to take all the energy that's coming in, calm it down and hone it. Is it going to be easy for us to meditate? No. Are we going to let it be the first thing that flies out the window? Absolutely. So just know that we're not going to be inclined to meditate, but it will be really important for us. Our subconscious chakra energy is life purpose. I mean, that's a big one. This is the third chakra. It's time to speak our purpose, our life purpose, which you can say like, that's lofty, but what is my life purpose? And it's the things that give you joy. Our life purpose doesn't have to be something that we even think of as a life purpose. Maybe it's just bringing a bit of peace into the world. Maybe it's being that centering anchor. Maybe it's, you know, it's being loving and compassionate. It doesn't have to be my life purpose is being, you know, a superstar or having everybody know my name. We like that. We like that as human beings. We've always liked that and we've always chased it. We can see it, you know, from the time of the of the pyramids and the Egyptians to, to now. And what we're going to see is that our life purpose can be just simply, calmly and beautifully being in harmony with the world around us. So here, chanting, humming, singing, that's going to be really important to activating our third chakra, to activating our thyroid even, and putting ourselves into alignment because we're a little bit out of alignment with our purpose, with why we're here. Subconsciously, we can be really thinking of, you know, build it bigger, build it better. I'm just seeing like the pyramids, right? Just make it so awe-inspiring that thousands of years later, people are still just, just awed. It's like, wow, how did they do that? So just being aware of this during this time is super important to just look at our heart, look at our soul, look at ourselves, take time to embrace our third chakra, take time to embrace us and, and scale it back and make it personal because our life purpose, that's, that's one of the most personal things you can, you can be thinking about. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the 10 of pentacles. We will have a tendency during this year in particular of looking at the world around us and being, and being jealous. We just, we just will. It's just going to be something that we look at and it's like, oh, I want this. Oh, I want that. So here with the 10 of pentacles reversed, this is very much saying subconsciously, we're going to have a tendency to compare and contrast ourselves, like compare ourselves to other people, say, oh, it should be like this, it should be like that, instead of saying, I'm happy, or I've got this. The Ten of Pentacles can also be looking at things and saying, I'm just not meant to, right? Generational curses, generational doubts, generational fears, I'm following this generational pattern, you know, type of thing. And this is my lot in life. This is just how it's going to be. And Spirit's like, mm, no, absolutely not. So here with the Ten of Pentacles, it's, it's also a release, a release of negative cycles, a release of negative ideas. And we're doing it subconsciously. So just being aware of that, where we're going to see ourselves moving forward in a direction and in a way that we hadn't anticipated, we didn't think was possible. It moves us then to our subconscious, our subconscious astrology message, which is the sun reversed. This is self-expression and and embody trust. We are having doubts with how to express ourselves and to trust ourselves, to move us forward, to say my heart matters and I get to shine. And that's going to be important, especially for, for Leos, especially, you know, because Leos are ruled by the sun, but it can also be, you know, in the way that our sun, our sunshine, our sun sign shines in our lives. So just be mindful about this. Be mindful that we can sit there and think, I just have to reinvent myself, right? It doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter how, you know, we're doing. It's like, oh, I just need to reinvent myself. And so it's like, let yourself shine. But we're going to be having a bit of difficulty with saying, this is me. This is how I get to shine. This is how I get to move forward. This is, this is my blessing. This is my beauty. So just be mindful about this. Subconsciously, we, we are really going to have a tendency to look at everybody else running the race and say, I have to be them. And feeling rather uncomfortable being ourselves because we know ourselves too well. Well, everybody we don't know can be living perfect lives because we don't know them. <laughs> and, you know, that's just what everybody else does, right? They live perfect lives. So just be mindful about this. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I hope you have enjoyed the astrology. Let me know of what you think of the setup because we're going to go and do the tarot readings. So, 
you can then check in over here at the astrology of it all. And I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you guys nothing but light, love, peace, and harmony. If you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, put a heart in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced in a video on the 1st of March. So keep your eyes open for that. Don't be scammed by anybody contacting you in the comment box saying, hooray, it will not be me. And also, yeah, if you're interested in purchasing a private reading, a private personalized meditation or healing, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. I do have mini readings being offered by popular requests. So check those out while they last. Okay, I love you all. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.